My name is Sandy Frischer. I'm vice chairman of NASDAQ OMX. Uh, I am here today. I feel like a Greek sailor on an odyssey because uh, I have a, literally have a schedule that's going to take me around the world, but it was important, I believe, to be here today. It's always fun to come to a conference where the convinced speak to the convinced. Um, with the occasional dissent when you have a, a minister here who's up for election this year. So that's fun. It's fun for me to watch elections in another country. Uh, I am uh, going to beat the record of the last speaker uh, because I will not even attempt to read my speech given the uh, timing. Uh, that's my way of showing the efficiency of U.S. markets. Uh, we adapt to circumstances and we try to be as efficient as we possibly can. So I'm not going to bore you uh, by lecturing you about what you already know, which is the value, the importance, both historically, currently, and in the future of the Greek shipbuilding industry. I'm going to just hit one topic and just hit it as succinctly as I can. Uh, the question really for the shipbuilding industry here in Greece is how do you finance yourself? How do you grow? How do you expand? There are basically three ways we do it or you do it. Uh, one is through loans. Uh, the second is through private equity, and the third is through capital markets. Except for the Chinese, the loan market, the banks really have, for a variety of reasons that we all know, uh, have been out of the loan lending business primarily. Uh, the Chinese have been very good about it. They have $1.5 billion on their portfolio. Uh, for Greek companies, which have reciprocated by investing $16 billion in Chinese ports because they carry 60% of all of the oil that goes to China. A very good trade on both sides. Uh, but beyond that, the two major areas that people look to for financing, uh, one is venture capital. In this case, a lot of it, or most of it, is coming from the United States. And actually, since 2008, there's been about $16 billion invested out of private equity uh, uh, in this space. And that's quite an extraordinary number. It far exceeds the amount of money that's been available through capital markets. On the capital market side, there are 16 list, uh, 16, uh, I'm sorry, 67 listed companies uh, that are in the shipbuilding industry. 22 are Greek, 12 are listed on NASDAQ. Um, so I come to you really as a way of introducing or reintroducing NASDAQ to you. NASDAQ has been known as a stock market. Uh, in fact, we are no longer a stock market. We are a technology company uh, and a highly diversified company that uh, happens to also run stock markets. The diversification of our business really has been on the support side of the capital markets. So we have invested in a whole range of other types of companies that provide services to the companies that list on NASDAQ. And so when someone wants to list, yes, you have to look at the volatility in that market, you have to look at the liquidity in that market, you have to look at the efficiency of being able to list on a particular market, and you have to make a judgment call about which market you think is the best place for you to list. On my way here, I happened to have walked down Wall Street, and I looked up to my left, because I was walking uptown, and I saw a building that reminded me of the Acropolis. And I thought for a second, and I said, what is that? What is that historic building, or that historic place? And it was the New York Stock Exchange. Um, NASDAQ is not a historic place. We were born in 1979. We were the first to in, uh, introduce electronic trading into the world. And we have evolved to the point where we ourselves became a listed company. And what we recognized is that to be a listed company, you have to provide and have all kinds of additional services. If you list, once you list, you are now running two types of companies because you're doing two types of businesses. You're doing your business, and then you have to do all of the stuff associated with running a public company. And believe me, it's an overwhelming job. And so when we recognized that, we decided that you couldn't just be a stock market, you really had to be a service provider to the companies that list on your exchange. I can get in trouble for this, but let me say that there is not much of a difference 
if you list on us or you list on our major competitor in the United States as it relates to the specifics of the market experience, listing in one place or listing in another. You're both going to have an IPO. The IPO is going to go essentially the same. The process is essentially the same. In one case, you stand where Mellon and Carnegie stood. In the other place, you stand where Steve Jobs and uh, all of the leaders of the new economy stand. But beyond that, it, it's a similar experience. For a company like ours, we lose money the day that somebody comes to an IPO. On that day, you have flown vice presidents or vice chairmen around the world. You know, we have had meetings, we've had dinners, we've had airfares, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We've done our marketing to say, come to us and try to make a case about why we're better. We're not better in the front end, we're the same. But like in lovemaking, after a wonderful night of love, the question is, will he or she still love me tomorrow? Now, I can assure you that our whole thrust is making sure that companies that list on NASDAQ are loved tomorrow, because that's where we succeed. We succeed when you succeed. We succeed because as your volumes and your profits go up, so does ours. So we have decided to invest and diversify in the area of what you do on the second day. And that's really the story. Because of time, I'm not going to sit here and uh, go through the, my, not, the minute details of that experience. Adam Costell, my uh, colleague, is on a panel, uh, and we're always available to talk to you. But the, the real truth is we believe in this industry. We believe in Greece. We believe that it is an interconnected world. And you, to a very large extent, have connected the world. NASDAQ, in terms of our own growth, are located in the United States, but we, too, are a global world. Uh, we help people get capital. And we help that capital grow businesses, grow jobs, and help economies uh, and people in this world about the gap that is now exists between the upper 1% and everybody else. The truth of the matter is, capital markets is a great equalizer. There's no question that people with more money to invest make more money. But the also truth is, is that through pension funds and other vehicles, union members, housewives, and retired people through their pensions are invested in the stock markets. And so it is not just an investment in people who are part of a company, but people who are part of a large economy. Uh, we are committed to make that experience work. We're committed to help capital markets grow. We're committed to help your companies grow. I want to congratulate you on this assemblage. I want to thank you for having me come. And any way that we can be of assistance to you, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Thank you.